Joining us now from Newsmax, New York, my old house colleague, Congressman and former judge, Ted Poe from Texas. Ted, we thank you for being here this morning on America's Forum. Thank you, J.D. Ted, you sent a letter to the president calling on the administration to send at least 2,000 National Guard troops to the U.S.-Mexico border. Now, I want to boil this down a little bit. Maybe you can help me understand this. Legally, isn't Governor Perry within his rights to call out the National Guard right now? What would make it different if the president were to deploy the guard on the border? J.D., you're exactly correct. The governor can call the National Guard to the border, but uh, the letter really is to have the federal government pay for that deployment. So it's, a, it's the obligation of the federal government to pay the National Guard, but the governors can call them out. I think uh, maybe reluctance on uh, Governor Perry is there's no funds in Texas to pay for the National Guard. So it's really a batter, battle over funding, how to, how to pay for it, rather than uh, the notion that it, that it could be done. Meantime, Ted, obviously you're, you're concerned about your home state, but we're hearing now that the administration has sent hundreds of these illegal minors to Nebraska and Illinois without offering those states official notice. Have you heard from your colleagues? Have you heard from your, those states about this movement of illegals? That is correct. Uh, Oklahoma, Nebraska, and some other states uh, it's part of the president's policy. He is missing the point about this entire problem on the border. Uh, his $4 billion, J.D., is really to take care of those people that have crossed indefinitely. Uh, right now, take care of them and then eventually school them, provide them uh, medical treatment, and, and provide them a place to live. That's why he's scattering them all over the United States without the permission, really, of those local communities. The point should be Mr. President, that you need to secure the border first. It's like a leaking boat that has a hole in it. Uh, you plug the hole up first, but instead of continue to get more pails to bail the water out. And that's what we want to do in the Republican conference, really secure the border that you and I have talked about for years, and then deal with the, the, the problem on the issue of the people that are, that are here that have come back. And you deal with it this way by quickly reuniting them with their home countries uh, in Central America and change the 2008 law to do so. Well, Congressman John Bachman joining in here, and I wanted to ask you about those proposals that the House GOP caucus has proposed in the past. We know J.D. had his bill that he had introduced when he was a member of Congress, and there are other measures out there right now, but is there anything new that really could get the attention of Harry Reid and Democrats that might be able to earn some bipartisan support in the House of Representatives, because you know the Senate has their version of the bill, which they claim has bipartisan support. Well, I'm not so sure that it has bipartisan support, but the Senate bill did, is maybe. the president's bill. <laughs> the president's uh, uh, bill is in the Senate, John, and it is uh, the $4 billion to really uh, relocate those uh, individuals, the migrants that have come into the United States permanently. It is misguided. I don't believe that is the answer. The House will propose its own bill, and hopefully, I think it'll pass bipartisan, and hopefully the Senate will take the approach that they should take, which is let's secure the border, and then let's also expedite the removal of those migrants that have quickly come into the United States in the last few months. Ted, you mentioned earlier, uh, in, almost in passing, that there should be a rewrite or perhaps a repeal of the William Wilberforce Law it's so good to have you because given your legal background, in addition to being a legislator, maybe you could give us the facts surrounding the Wilberforce Act and how this president is choosing to apply it. Is he manipulating the Wilberforce Act? You're right on, J.D. The, this law, 2008 law, is to find, uh, take uh, children, minor children who have been sexually trafficked to the United States for sex and, and give them some relief. But it has been expanded by the president to include everybody that is coming from Central America, including MS-13 gangs from El Salvador, criminals, and children. So he has broadened the interpretation of the law, misguided on the part of the president, to allow all these individuals in. Now. The reason is he has sent the word to Central America and really the whole world 
that he's not going to enforce the law. He will grant amnesty, executive amnesty, to anyone that comes to the United States. That's what people believe, and that's why they're all coming. So he's abusing the law of 2008. We need to make it clear uh, and re really rewrite that law to make it only apply to specific circumstances, but grant or remove the exemption from Central America and apply uh, the law equally to everyone, like we do with Canada and Mexico, who don't have an exemption. Ted, as you mentioned this, I think back to the fact that you represent the Lone Star State. Our president was there for a couple of days of fundraising and public appearances and yet would not visit the border. Why the reluctance on the part of this president to, to visit the border? He's aloof. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised he would not go down and see the situation firsthand. He said, I don't want a photo off. Photo off. Well, Mr. President, don't take your camera guy. You had your camera guy when you were in Colorado drinking beer and shooting pool. Just don't go down to the border and see. Exactly the crisis that's taking play that place, the massive amount of people crossing into the U.S. and how the Border Patrol has been removed from the border. Now it's taking care of all of these migrants, uh, really babysitting them, as some uh, Border Patrol agents say. And uh, so I don't, I'm surprised he would not go to the uh, border and see firsthand the crisis. I think it's aloof. And it also shows, shows that he's really disinterested in what is taking place on the Texas-Mexico border. Uh, Congressman, you think it's fair to say also that the president didn't want to look like he was listening uh, to Governor Rick Perry, that he wasn't being told what to do and then responding to that? Well, that could be true, t too. You know, Texas has uh, on its own started reinforcing the border uh, the United States in protecting the U.S. border. We're spending over a million dollars a week uh, to have uh, border security using state officials and the DPS down on the Texas-Mexico border. The Rick Perry, governors on the border with Mexico, understand the problem. It's the security of the border. The lack of security is the problem. And uh, I don't see that the president wanted to go down there and see the problem. If he saw the problem, he wouldn't have this massive $4 billion to relocate all those individuals into the United States permanently. He would deal with the problem, which is border security. Uh, Ted, even as you mentioned that in the efforts that Texas is making on its own to strengthen the border, uh, you'll recall uh, it seems that members of both parties at election time would use that phrase, that poll-tested phrase, we must secure the border. Well, I want you to listen to something from MSNBC. Chris Hayes on that cable network making the statement that more border security would actually make this immigration crisis worse. Take a listen. The border has never been more secured than it is now. And in some ways, the humanitarian crisis along the southwest border is actually a result of that security. But calling for more border security is the only way Republicans can talk about immigration. It's what their base demands. The problem is, those calls could make the crisis even worse. Ted, we've got two minutes remaining. You heard the analysis of uh, Chris Hayes. You, you want to respond to that? That is nonsense. Chris doesn't know what he is talking about. We need the National Guard on the border, not behind the border, to stop people coming into the United States. Border security uh, does not make the situation worse. Uh, the lack of border security makes the situation worse. That's why we have the thousands of people crossing in the U.S., because basically the border is not secure, no matter what Chris says and no matter what the president and Eric Holder say. Come down to the border. We'll show you. Well, uh, before everybody gets down to the border, Ted, uh, there's going to be action taken. Do you expect the House to come up with an alternative bill to what the president is asking for and what, what appears will sail through the democratically controlled Senate? Or should you guys just say no and not pass anything? Well, we'll pass something out of the House to deal with the problem. I don't know what the Senate will do. Uh, we never know what the Siesta Senate will do, but we'll do the right thing. We'll secure the border first and uh, we'll see what the Senate does, but we're not gonna pass the president's $4 billion uh, package. Congressman Ted Poe, Republican of Texas, thanks for checking in with us from Newsmax New York, and we will visit with you again in the days to come. Thanks so much. So you hear Ted there, John, and mm -hmm. I thought it was interesting. He already started to reshape the language, reuniting these illegals 
with their families in their home countries. Just don't call it self-deportation. Just don't, that's right, reuniting the families and upholding the law. It was good to hear from Ted Poe, and we want to hear from you, your thoughts on this vexing problem. Tweet us your comments at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum. There's also NewsmaxTV.com slash comment.